Good morning, Dave. Good morning. Good morning. Let's see your face. There we go. There you are. How's, how's it going? How did you do that backdrop? Um, it's a setting. I believe you click on more. I don't know if you like on your iPhone or like the computer, but I know when you click on more, it is a uh, meeting settings, minimize meeting, virtual backgrounds. Is like this on if the I phone? change my background. Yeah. So oh. I never tried Zoom on the uh on the um Oh I like that one. Yeah. So this how it switches up. Your head is turning. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That silly fan is kind of crazy. Yeah. So it's, all right. So know. um today we are going to do a little role playing. Um and I'm I'm seeing that some people are gonna join us late. Uh, so tell me, what kind of role playing do you need to work on yourself? Um, I think what's been holding me back was uh, just initially, like, what to say, you know, and I kind of, like, put myself off by, like, um, not really getting into the uh, um, the, the training like I should um, and just, just getting in it to get the practice and um, just kind of um been struggling a little bit with like getting the leads together but far as just initial the initial attack just getting on it getting on the phone what what to say getting it down clearly okay you know? and what state are you calling um arizona um for now okay and good morning um oh my god how do you say your name Ach luck you can call Ach me hussein well now tell me where you're located Pakistan, it's good evening here. It's Pakistan, 7 p.m. Pakistan, what, what time is it there? 7 p.m. Oh, my God. It's almost time to go to bed. And I just got up not too long ago. <laughs> no, I sleep very late. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to yeah. talk about initially um, how to call people about life insurance. And then we'll move on yeah. to the topic uh, that you wanted to talk about that you sent me the email on. Yeah, last time what uh, we communicated, we spoke about life insurance and then uh, I have searched some state where I can apply for license. I have no idea right now that uh, if I have a license from one state, I can sell in every state or I'm... Okay, let me stop you real state. quick. We can talk about that when we're off the webinar. Okay. But I, what I want to do is go over the role playing part on this video. That's, that's, right. what, this, that's what this webinar is about. Right, um, okay. So... Dave, remember that when you first call people, the whole yeah. goal is to only get enough information to send them a quote. Right. You know, we were taught, and I was, well, actually, I was taught that it's a one call close. You call them, you try to sell them on the phone, and then you move on to somebody else. Well, I think those days are gone because people do not want to be sold to on the first call. Um, yeah. they're being hammered with so many telemarketers and yes. number one, they've never met you. They have no idea what you look like. You're a telemarketer as far as they're concerned. So right. you have to establish some credibility and yeah. just get enough information to send them a quote, let them look at it, let them go to the website and see that you are who you say you are and right. prove some credibility by doing what you say you're going to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So when you initially call people, it's going to be very simple. You're going to ask enough questions to send them a quote. It doesn't matter if they've had it for that insurance for a thousand years. I don't care. I don't care if they just ran over their dog and they can't talk. I don't care about that either. Right. Um, I don't care if I can save them some money. Not interested. My right. whole goal on the first call is to get enough information to send them a quote. So I'm calling from which company? Which company? I will tell that. It I'm doesn't matter what company. Or sure, whatever company. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It can be for right. any company. Remember, you're not calling about the company. You're right. calling about getting a quote. Forget about right. company. Right. Okay. So forget about right. company completely. So Dave, let's do some role playing. You're the client. Right. All right. I'm the, I'm the insurance dude, and I want you to be as hard on me as you want. All right. So you get to be I the, be the today. Your role 
I'm Jasper, the same man. Not you. Not you. Out, um, out long. Just Dave. Okay. 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 Ring, ring. Hello. Hello. Is this Dave? This is Dave. Who Dave, is this? Got a minute. This is Robert Russell. Um, not really. Okay. When's a better time to call you? Um, I don't really have time. Okay. Uh, so, quick question: If you don't have time, why'd you answer the phone? Oh, wait, well, you're right. I got a minute, Dan. I can give you a minute. Okay, perfect. Uh, hey, I'm the broker for Insurance Price Right for the state of Texas. I was calling to see if I can give you a quote on your life insurance. I already have insurance. I'm straight. Exactly. That's why I called to see if I could save you some money. How much are you paying? Um, I, I'm, I'm, I really don't need any insurance. I got all the insurance I need. Exactly. That's why I called to find out how much you're paying. How much are you paying? Um, about... 200 a month. And how old are you? Um, 43. And do you smoke? No. How tall are you? 5'7". How much do you weigh? Um, 155. And how much coverage did you say? And where did you say you was from again? I'm sorry. I'm originally from Louisiana, but I live in Florida. How much coverage oh, okay. do you have? Oh, um, about 200,000. 200, okay. Is your email address still Dave at DaveRafa.com? Yes. Awesome. I'm going to send you some quotes. You take a look at them. If you have any questions, give me a call. Oh, okay. Bye -bye. Um, I like that. Very simple. Cut. You asked me Cut. the question, where are you calling? Where, where are you from? Now, I answered your question. I wasn't being a smart ass. <laughs> I truly right. am from Louisiana, and I'm calling you from Florida. I don't think that's what you were asking me, though. What you probably meant is what insurance company are you calling from? Right. But I heard Louisiana. I heard where are you from? I'm from Louisiana. Right. When I, when okay. I hear a question like, um, <coughs> who are you with? This is what I'll do on the phone. I'll go, I'm by myself. Did you need to talk to somebody else? I mean, if they're going to ask me that question, I'm going to be very specific about my answer. So the whole goal is don't get frustrated or flustered by any dumb objection they give. Your objections okay. were objections that I hear every single day. They're not dumb objections because those are real. Those are real objections that you're going to hear. You've just got to learn how to handle those objections and move on because I really don't care what your objections are. My goal is to get information to send you a quote. I don't care about nothing else. Okay. Gotcha. Now, how do you think you would have done on that call? If you were the agent, I probably would have went cold on the, um, <laughs> few <of> those. like, <laughs> Yeah, and then yeah, I probably would have froze up, like, well, or, or tried to explain myself, or, you know. Let me ask you a question. Okay. How old were you when you learned how to ride a bike? Um, seven years old. And how many times did it take you to learn how to ride the bike? And probably a few days. So you didn't quit after the first time? No. No, tell me how that happened. Tell me, tell me the process of when you when you started to learn how to ride a bike. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, first of all, you know, like had my dad holding the bike for a minute, you know. Okay. Um, then after a while, um, you know, you um, I, I was riding it in a straight line and kind of you know fell off towards the grass and. How and, did you feel when you fell off? Um, you know, not good at all. You know, like like a little. And, and embarrassed, but you know, I was excited that I was riding for a minute, you know. Okay. Um, but then I, you know, except I kept trying, so it just took a couple of days. So, and after the first day, did you decide you're going to keep trying this, or did you say, I'm going to try this again, like in a week from now? No, nope, I didn't, I didn't have that same mindset. So, you okay? So, the next day, tell me what happened. Um, like far as on the bike, 
Yeah, the bike. Um, you know, we started again, got back on the bike. We? Um, you and your dad? Yeah, yeah. he held okay. the back of the seat again. Um, I let it go when I was riding, and this time I got a, you know, kind of got my feet on the ground when I was losing balance. And, right. And that was all she wrote from there. Just each time I just got on the bike and you know, didn't need his help anymore. Just kept trying. So you know, if you got on a bike today, how old are you? 43. How hard would it be for you to ride a bike? Not hard at all. Just second nature, no. I mean, you, would you have to think about how do I balance? How do I keep from falling over if I turn? Nope. You wouldn't think about that at all? Nope. Guess what? Making phone calls and calling people on insurance is exactly what you described about learning how to ride a bike. Yes, it's hard in the beginning. And you're going to fall and you're going to say, this sucks. Having to deal with rude ass people on the phone sucks. But what I want you to think about is what's option B? You can go yeah. to work for somebody else, let them tell you what time to be there. Yeah, and that has not been fun. <laughs> what time to go on break, what time right. to come back from break, what time to go to lunch, how long you can go to lunch, what time to be back from lunch, when you can take your next break, when to be back from that break, when to go home. You're basically their boy. Mm. My dad told me when I was 10 years old, he said, remember, the same person that writes your check is the same person that makes the rules. So that's what you've got to understand is that you make the rules. If you've got somebody that's a butthead on the phone, guess what? They can talk to Mr. Click. You know who mm. Mr. Click is? It's this red button right under my <laughs> right on <my> phone. <laughs> it's it said it don't have it don't have that same wonderful feature like the old day when you can hang a phone up and actually clicks. But right. yeah, I got you. All right, so uh, I'll flag. Tell me what who are you wanting to call? Life insurance. Yo, I flag. Pakistan. Yes. Yeah, Come first on. life insurance. Thanks for life joining insurance. us. You were dozing off there. It's time to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I go to bed around two o'clock. <laughs> All right, so night. Are you going to call people about life insurance? Yes, sure. And what have you been doing now? What's been your game plan for calling people so far? Yes, um, uh, right now I'm free. I'm not doing anything here in Pakistan because I just came back from uh, UAE after spending 23 years in Middle East. Okay. So uh, for me, uh, selling life insurance over the phone is um, I'm more comfortable. Uh, uh, life insurance, medical insurance, uh, motor insurance, all these insurance, I'm comfortable to do that. Okay. So when you call people on the initial call, tell me how that works out. Yes. Uh, no, I'm going to call you right now. Oh, so we're going to do role playing? Yes. Oh, fun. I get to be the, the stupid person? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be exciting. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Hi, Robert. Hello? This is, uh, hi, Robert. This is a Khlaq Hussain, an independent insurance agent. You're who? Uh, I'm a Hussain. Oh, my you God. Are you Hussain. from the United States? Uh, right now, no, I'm not in United States, but I'm selling policies from uh, United States from so many companies. I'm okay. dealing with New York Life even. All right. What, so, what can I help you with? Just we have a couple of insurance policies. We can save money for you. I have just quick uh, few questions that uh, you have already insurance. Oh, yeah, plenty. Way more yes. than I need. I'm really not looking to buy more. No, I, I, I'm not selling you a new insurance policy. I just want to know how much uh, some assured and how much you are paying the premium for that. Why do you want to know that? So I will save money for you. I, what I'm going you to offer you definitely is the less premium. How do you know you I can will just, you? No, I will just send you a quote where you have some uh, 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 less premium with the same benefit. Uh, but I don't even know you. Triple, triple A insurance company from US. But how do you know it's better? 
yes, so, uh, we are dealing with uh, uh, hundreds of company and we know that uh, where we can save money. We, You're dealing with the hundreds. Doing... Now, when you first yeah. talked, you said you had a couple of companies you could send me some quotes on. Now it's a hundred? Yes, we will send you a couple of companies uh, a quote because uh, we will select the which are the best quote. If I know that uh, only the few things I know, I can send you the quote. You could just look into that. If you like, it's okay. If you don't like, then leave it. Okay. What do you need? I just need uh, how much premium you are paying and how much is the sum assured? Uh, right now, I've got three million. And how much premium? Two eighty-seven a month. Two eighty-seven a month. And uh, what is your age? I am fifty-eight. I've had this policy for a while. Okay. Uh, how how tall you are? How old am I? Yeah. I'm still fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. And right. uh, what is your hi height? Five ten. And weight? Two hundred five. Uh, okay, uh, uh, and what is the term of the insurance? How uh, the policy term? What you have right now? I've got a universal life. Universal life. Okay, so uh, just wait, and I will email you. Uh, your email is uh, Robert at rjcompanies.com. That's it. Yeah. Okay, I will send you the code. Just look into that. And uh, if you feel like comfortable, uh, you can just call me back or I will just check with you in the next couple of days. Okay, have a great day. Thank you. How did you feel about that call? Yes, uh, I'm comfortable. Uh, how do you feel? What is your uh, opinion about my call? Do I smoke? Oh, Joe, sorry, that I forgot <laughs> to ask. Yes. Do I take any medications? Yeah, that question I have to ask. Yeah. Have I been in the hospital in the last five years? Yeah. How's my uh, I, health I think, condition? Yeah, yeah, just health condition. I, you I missed a, need to ask. Yes. the big yes, stuff, I missed. Dude. Yes, sure, sure. <laughs> like, yeah, I missed. The, the big stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You yeah, yeah, because be... I, I, I'm making this phone call after maybe, uh, you know, you can say in a gap of one year. So uh, one year I'm not doing anything, so while moving from Middle East to Pakistan. So I, I would Dave, what did you like about that phone call? It was, uh, it was rough. Um, it was rough. I would have felt stressed. Now, how did you feel about how he did with me? Oh yeah, that's, that's what I mean. It's, um, um, I would have felt stressed. It seemed like it was, uh, like I was being sold. That's how I would have felt like I was being sold and, and nobody wants to be sold. So you felt like he was trying to sell me something, not save me money. Right. Why did, why did you feel that? Um, a lot of information was coming at me. Um, like, like about the company, um, how many, how many carriers they have. Um, um, the fact they told me you can save me money. Um, it just didn't seem like, uh, it just seemed like it was like, it was a lot of information coming at me. What do you think he could have said that was, that could have been different to make it more believable? Um, I would say the direct questions. Like what? Um, like kind of like how you did, like when you asked about, um, um, just trying to get the information. Um, instead of um because it seemed like he's more on the ropes um it's the best way i can explain it mm -hmm. um like he lost the control of the conversation i'll flag anything you want to say about that uh yes uh, uh somehow he is too uh, because while speaking uh, uh sometimes my words were twisting and i missed to ask the medical questions, uh, which I was supposed to do. And uh, uh, because right now I, I don't have information and quotes from the companies in USA. If I had those in front of that, I think I, I'm well, are more- the, uh, Are the health different. conditions different in Pakistan? I mean, do y'all- uh, No, if the, the health, health, health condition, no, 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 it's important. It's very important here also in, uh, Health conditions uh, is the same uh, underwriting terms here also, but I missed because uh, I'm making this phone call after one year. 
So uh, that was the reason I missed some questions. Right. Okay. Yeah, because in mostly here, we sell life in, in, in Middle East and Pakistan, we sell life insurance in face to face, but medical insurance and motor insurance, we sell on over the phone. And uh, people don't mind if we call a uh, couple of times also, uh, it's okay here. There's no problem for that. But I am sure because in US, if I call the people, I need to ask all the question at one time. I cannot call. If I miss a question, I cannot call again and ask the same, same question again. Why not? Why can't you call back? Uh, I think people will not like it that if I uh, call know? back that I missed this know? question. Can I ask well, it again? It depends on how you word it. What book? It depends on how you word it. Yeah. Um, what if you call back and say, you know, I, I forgot to ask you something because I'm looking at the rates for smoker and for non-smoker. Yeah. And the smoker rates are way more than the non-smoker rates. Do you yeah. smoke? No, no, I don't smoke. Yeah. Okay, good. Let me update those quotes and I'll send them to you. Right. I mean, that tells me that you want to save me money. Yes, yes. Uh, Dave, if I called you back and I forgot to ask you if you were a smoker or not, and I called you back and said, hey, I'm looking at rates here for smokers and non-smokers, and the rates for smokers are way high. Do you smoke? Would you Would you be offended if I called you and said that? No, not at all. No. It's not at all, all on how you present it. Yes. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of? Um, you might not. Y'all might not have this restaurant in Pakistan. Have you ever heard of uh, Chris Ruth's Steakhouse? No, no. Dave, have you? No. Dave, what is the nicest steak place where you live? Um, that would be Morton's. Morton's. And how much is a plate? Average. Uh, average, maybe for a steak, maybe about 25, 30. Okay. And what would be the cheapest steak place that you could think of? Um, maybe Ponderosa. And how much would that be? Maybe about twelve, sixteen. All right. Dollars. So you got two different steak places. You have one that has a twelve dollar steak. You got another one that has a twenty five dollar steak. We're talking right. about steaks. Twelve dollars, twenty five dollars. How can one charge twenty five and the other one charge twelve? Um, quality. Um, it's a steak. Right. Okay, what else? Um, uh, really, it's how they dress it up. Exactly. It's how you dress it up. It's how you present it. But if you don't present the fact that you can offer non-smoker rates as far as smoker rates, and you don't call them back because you're worried about what they think, it's none of my business what they think about me. I don't care what they think about me. My goal is to get information to send them a quote. I feel like you got to quit worrying about what do they think about me. So if the, hold see, on. If, if that's a concern, don't sell insurance. Period. If you're concerned about what people think of you, you do not need to be selling insurance because most people do not trust insurance people. Hmm, yes, the number right. one occupation of people that don't trust people is insurance. Number two is real estate. Guess what? Yes. I've got both of those licenses. Great. But I don't care. You know why? Because I don't care because you don't pay my bills. Hmm. And you don't sign my check, which means that I make my own rules. Yes. So you got to forget about what people think. Do I care that every single video has me with a hat on. No. When I first made the videos of selling insurance over the phone, my son, who does video, video editing, saw my video and he goes, oh my God, that is the worst quality video I've ever seen. I said, Vinny, I don't care. I want people to see the real me. And that's the attitude you've got to have when you're calling people. You cannot care what people think. Yeah. So, right. see, that's the hang up that people have about getting on the phone. 
they're so worried about what are people going to think that they don't want to get on the phone. All right, so Dave, I want you to call. Tell me how do you say how do you say your name again? I'm just going to call. I'm going to call you Al. Your new name is you can Al. call me AK. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to uh, you've already sent him the quotes, Dave. Okay. I've already so now it's time to do the follow up. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Ring, ring. Hello, Al. I don't think he's going to answer me. the phone. So I'm the customer? Yeah. Hello. Yes. Al, how's it going? This is uh, Dave with um, the uh, life insurance broker um, from uh, Arizona. I was calling yes, back. Did you get a chance to look at the quotes? Uh, sorry, Dave. I didn't get a time to look into that. But okay. uh, give me a call next week. Uh, I will see you into that. Okay. But the quotes, I can kind of tell you what I sent you. Um, you had a minute. Um, in those quotes, I sent you about 150 quotes, um, but about the top five major carriers um, in those quotes, I figured that you'd be most interested in those. Um, one, of the, one of the quotes was, you, were, you said you was a non-smoker, right? Yes. yes okay. Yes. Um, and the quotes kind of came back at uh, for about $50 a month. Um, we can get you started um, into a quote. You got a minute to uh, um, get some information from you? Yeah, Dave, I will mention one thing. I have already uh, $3 million insurance with New York Life. You make sure, before sending me the quote, make sure that you can compete with that. Okay, yeah, and I definitely have the top five yeah. that compete so with that. So you can check into that and ju just send me a revised quote. If your quotes are better than that, I will consider it. Okay, you got about um, about five minutes right now? Uh, no, not, right, not, not at the moment. Uh, can you give me a call next week? Um, who would you like the beneficiary to be? Is my wife. Okay. Um, and, um, and how old is your wife? Yes, yeah, she is fine. Perfect. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, and uh, what address would you like? Uh, address me? Um, for, would you like the policies to be sent? The quotation you can send to me. Uh, just uh, review the quote. As I mentioned to you I have a quote from already insurance from New York Life. So I don't know from which company you have mentioned. Just make sure your course are better than that. Okay. Um, what would be a better time? To, I'll follow up with you another time then. Yeah, same time next week, same day. Okay. Thank you, Al. Thank you. Dave. Yes. Talk to me I about got, that call. Yeah, I got lost with my questions <laughs> like on the, uh, on the follow-up. Like if I had the app in front of me or to pull up, um, I was just going to just go in and just ask the questions because I see he answers a lot of my questions. He already told you to make sure that it competes against his New York life policy. You're not, you're not there yet. He told you to actually, right. I'm not sure if he told you twice. He might have told you. Yes, he did. Tell, yeah, he did tell me twice. Yes, he did. So what the hell are you doing? Trying to close it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just assuming as if I already had the quotes that I sent them there. You're still that, trying to close yeah. them on the first call. All right. You okay. don't have enough information to close them yet. Okay. So, so even in the follow up, um, you're not done. Gotcha. Is that right, Al? How'd you feel about that? For me? Yes. I've called you Al today. It's so much easier to pronounce. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think you can uh, call me Hussein. Hussein is okay for you? Hussein? Yes. Okay, I think I can say that. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, Hussein. So now I have make a follow-up call. No, no, no. My question is, how did you feel about that phone call? And the how day, we yeah, it was, it was not you. a very good call. Uh, it was not uh, look like that somebody with complete knowledge is calling. Okay. Did you feel like he was trying to close you and wasn't listening to you? No, uh, he cannot close. He no, cannot did you close. feel like he was not listening to you, to what you were telling Yeah, him? he was not listening and he has a lack of knowledge also. At this point of time, he should uh, uh, he should tell me that he will uh, review all the course which he sent to me 
and he will send me back with the uh, having a comparison with the New York life and definitely he will make it better than New York life. Okay, next question, uh, Dave. Yes. He told you to call him back the same time next week and you said, okay. Is that your intention to call him back at the same time next week? Um, yes. Next same time next week. It is now 9.37 a.m. Central Time, and you're going to call him back on April the 27th at 9.37 a.m. Is that right? That's right. Okay. So uh, what do you do first thing in the mornings? Um, usually when I get up, uh, um, get myself prepared. Um, you go anywhere? See what... Oof. No. No, you don't go anywhere at all in the mornings. No. What are you, do, what are you going to be doing on Sunday the 26th? Oh, usually on a Sunday. I think about that on the Sunday. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably will be up. Are you going to go anywhere? Yeah. Um, probably may, maybe take a walk or something. Are you going to drive know. your car anywhere? Um, no. Not at all? No. Guaranteed? Guaranteed. You're not going to drive anywhere in your car on Sunday the 26th. No. So unless something came up, you know, of course, like but what? um, maybe um, a friend of mine needed to be picked up. Maybe an emergency, something come up. Okay. So a friend of yours calls you on Sunday, said, I need help. And you drive over there. And on the way there, you get into a car wreck. Your car is out of commission. So now you're dealing with your car the next morning and 937 rolls around and you forget that you're supposed to call Hussein. But you told him that you were going to call him. It completely blows your mind and you forget about him because you're dealing with your car. But you told him you're going to call him on the 27th at 937 in the morning. And you don't call him. Who's saying? Yes. Do you remember that he told you he's going to call you? Yeah, he said he will call me at the same time. Same but day he didn't week. call you. How do you feel about that? Then it's not good. It's not good. How do you feel not about it? Is he, a, is he a liar? Yes, if he will call me maybe after, uh, not the same time, after two, three hours late, maybe I'm busy. I will say, sorry, I can't answer. I, Dave, I, here's I, the point. Never commit to a day and time that you're going to call him back. Anything can happen. If somebody says, can you call me back next week about the same time? You know what I tell them? I can call you back next week, but I can't guarantee what day I'm going to call you. Gotcha. Okay. Because even though your intentions are to call him back at 937, if for some reason you've gone through this whole deal and you spent this time on quotes, just your lack of following up at this special time that you told him is going to blow the whole deal and you've lost all the credibility that you built up at this time. What I do is if I tell somebody I'm going to call them back and I can't call them back to give them quotes, I'll call them and tell them, hey, I know I told you I was going to get you quotes. It's just not going to happen today. Here's what's come up. Is it okay if I call you back when I have those quotes done? Well, how long do you think it'll take? I should have them done by five o'clock today, tomorrow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You cannot commit to telling people you're going to do something. You don't want to tell them what you think they want to hear. What I want to hear from people is the truth. That's it. Nothing else. Yeah. No sugar coating. Tell me the truth. I talked to a guy today and I told him I was getting him, get him quotes on his homeowner's insurance before noon today. And I've got those quotes that I'm looking at right now on this other monitor. Cause I will get those quotes out today. If I can't get it done, I'm going to call him back and say, I won't have the quotes by 12. Can you give me till five? 
Of course he's going to say yes. He didn't care. Do you see the point? Yeah. That's why on follow-ups, you never want to commit. When you're doing send out quotes, you never want to tell people, I'm going to send you quotes and I'm going to follow up with you tomorrow. Is that okay for me to call you back tomorrow? That's a, oh, hell no. Never tell somebody you're going to call them back tomorrow. Because now they're on guard. They're thinking, oh, shit, he's going to call me back. He's going to try to sell me. So I always leave it with him. I'm going to send you quotes. You take a look at them. If you have any questions, call me. So my attitude is you take a look at them. If you have any questions, you call me. Different posture. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. You're right. So now the pressure is off of me and the pressure is off of them because they don't feel like they're being pressured into buying anything. It's a very laid back approach. Okay. Um, Hussein. Yes. You're going to call Dave. Okay. You're going to do the quoting call. Mm -hmm. Then after you're done with that, you're going to do the follow-up call. Okay. Okay. You ready? Dave, yeah. give it to him. All right. <laughs> I'm going to call Dave. Hello. Ding, ding. Hello. Hello, Dave. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you are fine. This is Hussein. Uh, last week we spoke uh, and I sent you quotes uh, for life insurance. I'm sure the quotes are better and uh, uh, what you have, I hope you have looked into that. Um, a little bit. Yes. What do you feel about that? Uh, they, 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 were, they were all right. I just accepted really didn't have a chance, had a chance to look at them. So can you look into that in detail? And if there's any question query, just write it down. And when uh, I will call you, you can ask me any question in detail, whatever you have, and I will answer to that. I can call you back in next couple of days. Okay, I can do that. What would be the good day for you to call? Um, anytime after Wednesday is good. Okay, okay, I'll do that. But what would be the morning would be okay or afternoon would be okay for you? Um, it doesn't matter. Okay, it's okay. I'll give you a call next week. Okay. Okay, thank you. I was almost going to get you. <laughs> I was getting ready to nail you, and then you went a different direction on me. I was saying, oh, shit, he's, he's in the clear. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew you were going to say, okay, I'm going to call you back tomorrow morning. <laughs> All right, uh, Dave, how'd you feel about that call? Um, I, I feel good about it. I felt like it was, you know, normal. Um, um, call didn't seem pressured. Just, it felt normal to me. Okay, good. Um, so did you feel pressured at all? Did you feel like he was trying to sell you something? Not at all. Good. See, that's the way the phone call supposed to go. He never committed on a day and time. He did narrow it down to morning or afternoon, which is a beautiful thing. Um, I would score that on a scale of one to 10, about a 9.5. Okay, so he put you off saying he didn't get a chance to look at them. I liked what you said. How did you feel about those quotes? I'm glad you didn't use that terrible T word, which is worse than the F bomb. You know what the T word is, right? Think. Think. Bad word. Very bad word. Never want to say that T word. All right. So follow up again. It's now after Wednesday in the morning. We got to do another follow up call. Go ahead. All right. So I should make another follow up call? Well, okay. hell yeah. You're not done. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ring, go ahead. Hello. Good morning, Dave. Good, good morning. How are you, Dave? This is Hussein. Oh, how's it going? Doing all right. I hope you remember me. We spoke about regarding your life insurance. Yeah, oh, yeah, I remember. I hope you have gone through the quotation in detail and you have some questions which I should answer. 
Um, no questions. I got. I looked at the quotes though, but I don't, I don't really have any questions about them. This this means you like the court. Yeah, it, it, the the numbers are straight. So shall we proceed for the your policy? Um, and not really. Um, I just haven't decided on like which one. Okay, so you need more time to think over it. Um, you know what it, it what it is is one was uh, um, it's not even it's not even a matter of like I just got a fear I'm just not ready just to pay it right now. That's all I got. I got an idea of what I like. Well, just just let us, let us see. I I have sent you around six courts. Can we narrow into at least two or three courts that we can uh, uh, proceed for it? It will be what you like. Can you just? Give me a little idea of the which court you like the most. Um, it was the one. Of it was uh, it was fifty dollars a month. I don't even remember the company. I, you know that number just sounds good to me. It was. It but was one quote I have sent to you. It it, it will save fifteen dollars for you per month. It's a thirty-five dollar a month with the same sum assured. You have okay. Already, or I can increase the sum assured with the fifty dollar. Ultimately, you are getting more benefit out of it. Oh, except the fifty was good, you know, the one I saw. I don't remember which one it was, but that was good. Yeah, the same. You you yeah. proceed with the same premium, but more sum assured. Yeah, like I said, I weren't ready to like, you know, pay that in the day though. But you know, we can do that, you know, some other time. But I looked at them, but I just wasn't ready today. Yeah. Okay, Dave. No, I know. I have one question. I tell you one good thing that the fifty dollar with the higher sum assured is policy from the New York Life for you, and this is one of the best company in USA also. So uh, I think you agree for that. I will just take a few minutes to write down some uh, uh, information from you to fill up the form. So uh, is this okay for you? Um, if it's going to be long, because I really got to be getting ready for work. No, no, it's, it's just a five time. minutes job. It's, it's not a longer period. Can okay. I have your uh, name as per your uh, uh, passport? Okay. All right. Name is uh, Dave Dave. Okay. And your exact date of birth? Um, 73076 okay and your uh, okay, let's stop right here. exact height let's stop i right should here. stop okay yeah because now we don't have question of what that um, i like how you went through and got him to go to a point to do the application what i've right. done a little bit different number one you did say hmm. the t word hmm. you asked how did you what did you think about the quotes right bad word it's a very bad okay. word how okay. do you feel Feel is a much better word. The other thing is when Dave said that I, I don't want to pay the money right now. Hmm. Um, he said that twice, hmm. but you just kept going. So my question is, when you get to the point where you've got to finish the application, are you going to hit him with the money right now? Because uh, he told you twice. He didn't want to give you money. Right when now. I told him that I'm say uh, either I, I can increase the sum short or I can save the money, then he was agreed for fifty dollar. But he told you twice. Yeah, he told me twice. I don't want to pay uh, money right now. But when he fill up the form, then he will tell me that when he can pay the money. Maybe in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, he can he, he can pay the money. Okay. But he is in my final list. All right. See, what I would have done is I would have put it to him this way. Um, we don't collect money up front anyway, because what I want to do is I want to make sure that you go through underwriting, you get approved. We don't collect money until we are officially approved by the insurance company. So there's no money at all today. I right. don't want your money today. Right. That's what I had. Oh, yes. With. Yeah. Okay. Because here in Middle East, what we, we were used to do, we collect the check immediately along with the application. And if the underwriters uh, increase the premium, then we ask the more money from the client. I got you. Because okay. at the same time, we tell them that this is a standard premium, but if the premium will increase and the underwriter will uh, increase the premium, you have to pay more money. So we make him agree for that because sometimes a client has some uh, medical conditions. Sometimes he is not aware of that. When he will go for medical checkup, then uh, he has to pay money. But if the sum assured is with a non-medical, then it premium will remain the same. Dave, how did you feel when you told him twice that you didn't have the money? You don't want to give him money. It, it was uh, pressure. You know, you know, at that point, I just felt like, uh, um, 
he didn't address my uh, objection. Okay. So if he would have said something like what I just said, well, I don't collect money up front anyway. That would yeah, put that's me at ease. Idea, yeah. yeah, it would have put, put me at better? ease. Yeah, it would have put me at ease immediately. Okay, well, I'm not being sold right now. And, you know, that's, that's one thing that people don't understand is that I don't collect money at all, ever, on the first month's premium. And it, unless they push me and say, well, when am I going to be covered? I'm not going to answer that question because I'm going to answer that question with a question. How soon do you want this coverage to start? I wrote a guy three million of life insurance. He's fixed to go on a cruise. And he said, well, um, what about the money part? I said, well, we don't collect money up front. Well, when am I going to be covered? And I said, when do you need to be covered? He goes, well, I'm going on a cruise in four days. I said, do you want to be covered while you're on that cruise? And he goes, yes. I said, then I got to collect money up front. He goes, okay, fine. And so then I filled out the banking information. But if they ask me, when am I going to be covered? I'm not going to answer when you're approved. I'm going to ask, I'm going to respond with, when do you want to be covered? Always try to yeah. answer questions with a question to yeah. find out yes. exactly yeah. where they're coming from. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Got you're it. right. 100%. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to cover is uh, calling about different things as a door opener to get you into life insurance. When I first started selling insurance, I used to call for homeowners insurance expiration dates. Okay. I would call people and say, hey, when is your homeowner? Now, th now I only do this if you have a PNC license. Are you PNC license day? Yeah. Okay. Who's saying you sell car insurance? So I started with medical insurance when I started as a Okay, well, do you, are you licensed to sell auto and home? No, I, I don't have any license right now in, in USA for anything, but I have uh, uh, checked all the state. There are some states. This is the reason I asked in the beginning some question. You said okay. we'll talk about um, later. As a, as a general rule, it's always easier to go in on the first call with something other than life insurance. Yeah. Just to get their information. Um, mm -hmm. When I first started, I, I called to find out when their homeowner's insurance was coming up for a note. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the office laughed at me because they thought I was crazy, not trying to sell insurance. I'm just getting information. I said, okay, mm -hmm. laugh at me all you want. Yeah. And then after about three months, as I've mm -hmm. got a thousand expiration dates of homeowner's insurance, I will call them back and say, hey, your homeowner's comes up. Can I give you a quote? Well, of course, they're shocked because I called them back because they thought that they blew me off, which, no, they didn't. And then I was starting to sell homeowners insurance, like a bunch. And then I say, well, you know, if something happens and um, you die, who's going to pay the house off? Yeah. And I would transition me to life insurance. Mm -hmm. And as a newbie, I was voted rookie of the year because I was doing things totally different than what everybody was being trained. So my thing, the, the reason I'm giving this, this long-winded story is if you're having a problem with life insurance as your door opener, go in with something else that people want to talk about and get that information and then go back and talk to them about that and try to transition into life insurance. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's good, it's, it's sounds good. Okay, uh, I'm gonna post this video this is going to go on YouTube today. I'm going to post cool. this video. Oh, yeah. Dave, you're a, a national star. And All Pakistan, right. every insurance company in Pakistan is going to be trying to recruit you today. So get yes. ready. Your phone is going to burn. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, if you have any questions for me to call me, uh, Hussein, call me also. Or you can probably instant message me. It might be a little bit easier. because Yeah, it's a messenger. Uh, do you use WhatsApp? Do what now? WhatsApp. You use WhatsApp? No, I don't. Okay. Just send some messages so, on Facebook. I know you're fixed right, to go to bed okay. about 30 minutes because okay. you look way older than me. and you probably So I'll give you a call after one hour. Uh, 
regarding my question about my license in USA and some more okay. questions. All right, sounds good. All right, so y'all have a great day. If you have anything else, we're gonna do this every Monday at nine o'clock. Okay. Come back next Monday and then I'll- Yeah, sure, sure. And we'll do some more verbal I will join. reviews on the phone. Yeah, okay, I, join, I, definitely. I do got some questions for you. So if, it, if the email or whatever is easier, I'll do that. They're real simple. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. Okay, right, have thanks, Robert. Uh, 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 Robert, I have one question. Uh, uh, do you answer uh, messenger call? I can, if I call yeah. them in messenger. Yeah. Okay, okay. I will do it in, uh, the, after the nine. The problem that we might have is that it's, it's kind of hard to understand you because you have such a deep accent. Mm -hmm. It might be easier for me just to do you talk to you through messenger. Uh, I should be used to, to uh, understand and to communicate in the accent which Dude, other people should understand. Accent. I will try on messenger call. <laughs> if not, then I will write it. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a great day. Yeah. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Have All a right. good day. Bye-bye.